everyone! Today I am going to demonstrate how to make veggies and a dill dip. It's a really great dip and you can use it to dip any kind of veggies in or you can also use it as a chip dip. So today I'm going to show you how to make it and how to get carrots and celery ready to go with the dip. And this is a great thing. You can have it as like a snack or it works well um, as a side dish. Or if you're going to um, like a family picnic, you can bring this. If you're bringing it to a family picnic, you might want to like double or even triple the recipe to make a lot of the dip because everybody is going to love it. Okay, so the first thing I did is before I came on the video, I already washed my hands and I did sing happy birthday two times through. So my hands are nice and clean. Now, if I have my recipe here, and uh, you can get my recipe off of my Google Classroom if you're in my class, or you can get it down in the comments. I'll link it down there. Okay, so my step one of my veggies and dip recipe is wash the celery and cut it into small sticks lengthwise, and wash and peel the carrots and then cut them into small sticks. So I'm gonna take my carrots and celery over to the sink and I'm gonna give them a good wash. Okay, so I'm walking over to my sink and I'm gonna turn on warm water. Okay. And I'm really gonna to have to scrub the inside of the celery really good, of the celery rib, because you can get a lot of dirt in here. Now celery is the stem of the celery plant. So it was growing in the dirt before they picked it. So you really want to get inside your rub back and forth, get it clean inside the rim. Okay. Good. And then I'll lock the other one. Okay. Good. And then I'm going to just rinse off my carrots. They're not going to come very clean, but I am going to peel them. So they will, um, this kind of outside layer will be removed. So I'll just clean them the best that I can. Okay, good. All right, and I'm gonna take them back over to my demonstration table. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is cut my celery. So I'm gonna lay them on my cutting board, okay? And I'm gonna use a paring knife. A paring knife is a short, sharp, pointed knife. And the first thing you do is cut off the end here that's right below this elbow. So I'm laying it on my cutting board. I'm going to keep my fingers curved like this, not like this, where I can cut them. Keep them curved. I'm going to pay attention and I'm going to cut very slowly. Curve my fingers. I'm going to cut off the end here and I'm going to throw this part in the trash. Then I'm going to come over here and the white end here, the white part of the stem that was growing in the ground, we're going to cut that part off. Throw that away. And then we want to cut the celery so it's, the sticks are about this long and real skinny. So it's nice for dipping. You wouldn't want to like serve this to your family or some friends or a guest and have to have them like shovel the dip with this. It's, it's not polite. So we want to cut them so they're nice and thin and so they're about this long. So I'm gonna cut this, I think, twice. So here and here, okay? Now this cut you have to be very careful with because I'm gonna cut it down the middle of the rib. Just make sure you keep your fingers curved and back. Cut down the rib and cut down the rib. This is a nice size for a celery stick. This one's a little wider, so I think I might cut it into two get three pieces out of it, okay? And then I'm gonna use just a regular plate and start putting them on in kind of a attractive manner to serve it. All right, again, on this one, I'm gonna cut off the white end, throw that part away. I'm gonna cut off here, right under this elbow right here, okay? And I see it's about this long. I'm probably just cut this into two pieces because I think if I cut them into three they'll be too short. Okay and these are a little thicker so I'm going to cut these into three pieces. Okay and this one I'm just going to cut into two. Remember keep your fingers back cut slowly. 
Now I know some of you have probably seen uh, chefs on TV cooking really fast and dicing things quickly. I don't want to see any students cutting like that. Okay, those chefs have gone to chef school. They've learned how to do that safely. We have not yet. So I want you to cut safely and slowly and carefully. Okay, the next step is to peel the carrots. So this is a carrot peeler, okay? And this works really great for carrots. And you can also use it for um, peeling potatoes too. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk over here, over to the garbage can, and I'm going to hold the carrot at the top and just go with a downward motion to peel the carrot into the garbage can. I'm just taking that outside layer of skin off the carrot. I'm gonna turn it this way and to this side. You can see, now it looks nice and clean. Got my other carrot. I'm gonna peel that one. And then peel this side. Okay. Now, if you have um, don't have a carrot peeler at home, you can use a knife, but it's a little bit dangerous and it takes a lot longer. So it is nice if you can go to the dollar store and get a carrot peeler. Okay, the next step is to cut the carrot. So of course we don't want to eat this end part, so we're going to cut that end off carefully. And then we're going to cut the very tip off and throw that away. Do the same with this one. Cut the end off. Cut the tip off here. Throw that away. And then we're going to cut the carrots again so they're about this long and real skinny. So I think these I'll just cut them in half. Okay. Again, I gotta keep my fingers away from the blade. Now the carrot's a little tricky because it does try to roll around on you. So you're gonna have to keep your fingers curved so you don't have them sticking out. And you're gonna make a little start. Kind of take it and make a little cut to get started. And then push down. This first cut is the most dangerous one, so be careful. Now, once I cut it in half, it's a lot better because I can lay it down flat and then I don't have to worry about it rolling around while I'm trying to cut. So now what I'm gonna do is cut this so they're in nice, thin pieces. I'm gonna cut right here. Okay, you can see I've got my carrots there. I'm gonna go on my plate. Again, make a little cut and then cut it through. Again, now this is the curvy one, so I have to be careful. Curve your fingers. Go slow and carefully, keeping your finger away from the blade. Then take it, lay them down so they're flat, so they're not so dangerous. You don't roll around as much. Keep your fingers curved as you're doing this. Now when you go to wash this knife, I do not want you dropping it into your sink of hot soapy water because then when you're reaching around to try to find a bowl or something to wash, you don't wanna grab this with your bare hand. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna set this knife towards the back of your sink and you're gonna wash it separately by itself very carefully. Do not drop it into the sink of hot soapy water. Okay, so I want the carrot sticks to be about this long, real skinny. So again, I have to do that first cut carefully, then lay it so it's flat. This one's already pretty small, so I'm just going to put that one on the plate. And I'm going to cut this one again. Put that on the plate. And my first cut here. Careful, keep your fingers curved and away from the blade. Lay it so it's flat. There we go. Get it started. Push it down. All right. So now I've got my carrots and my celery cut. So now what I'm gonna do is make the delicious dip. Okay, so step three on my recipe says, mix the sour cream and mayonnaise in a small bowl. So for this, I'm gonna use a small mixing bowl and I've got real mayonnaise. Make sure you use real mayonnaise, not Miracle Whip. 
and sour cream. Now this is just a really, this is your normal sour cream like you would put on tacos, but it's just a really big container of it um, since we're gonna be cooking, a lot of students are gonna be making this. Okay, so I need, if I look at my recipe at the top, I need one third cup of sour cream. So I'm gonna use a one third cup measuring cup and since I'm measuring something creamy, I need to use a rubber scraper, or some people call this a spatula. So I'm gonna get one third cup of mayonnaise first. I'm gonna pack that down into the measuring cup. And then I'm gonna use the side of my rubber scraper to level it off. And then I'm gonna use my rubber scraper, go around the whole outside edge, and put that into my bowl. get it all in there. Now, if you're making this at home, your mom or grandma or dad, parent, is not gonna probably want you to get mayonnaise into the sour cream. At school here, it's okay, because we're only gonna use the mayonnaise and sour cream for everybody making dip. So it's okay if we get a little mayonnaise and sour cream. But if you're making this at home, um, I wouldn't wanna put, mayonnaise and my sour cream. So you probably should rinse this off, but we won't here because we're only gonna make dip with this. So again, I'm gonna pack it down into my measuring cup. So it's overflowing. I'm gonna level it across. And then use my rubber scraper, go around the outside edge, and then put that into my recipe. Okay, there we go. Now, it says mix the sour cream and mayonnaise in a small bowl, so I'm gonna blend those together. And remember, use your rubber scraper to scrape the outside of the bowl. Get it all nice and blended. Okay. Now, the next ingredient, it says add, for step four, add the parsley flakes, the dill weed, the onion flakes, the seasoned salt, and the garlic powder. So we're gonna be using these five ingredients to make this really delicious dip. So the first one is one teaspoon of dill weed. So I'm gonna find my one teaspoon measuring spoon. Make sure you get the teaspoon, not the tablespoon. So the teaspoon is one TSP, not one tablespoon, not one TBSP. That would be a really terribly spicy dip. Um, it would not taste good. So we're gonna get the one teaspoon and the first one is the dill weed, okay? So, oh, first one is the parsley flakes. So here we go, here's my parsley flakes. I'm gonna take the lid off. I'm going to fill it so it's overflowing. Now, this is kind of hard to measure because these flakes are kind of large. So you can, it doesn't really work to use a leveler. So you can kind of just use your finger and kind of pat it so that you have one teaspoon of the parsley flakes. We'll put that in. Okay. Next, it's one teaspoon of the dill weed. It's this container, the dill weed. This is, dill weed is the same um, ingredient that is in dill pickles because of its flavor. But all of these different herbs and spices are gonna come together. Um, I filled it so it's overflowing. And now I'm going to use my leveler to level it across. Okay, put that in. Okay, my next ingredient is one teaspoon onion flakes. Okay, now what these are are little pieces of onion that have been dehydrated. And actually all these herbs are. And what you do is when they are added to a recipe, they actually become soft again and the flavor comes out, okay? The next ingredient is a half teaspoon seasoned salt. Now make sure you're careful on that. Seasoned salt is very spicy, very salty, strong flavor. So it says a half teaspoon. Make sure at this point you switch measuring spoons and get the one half teaspoon, not the one anymore. I'm gonna get, take the lid off this, and I'm gonna get one half teaspoon seasoned salt. Level that up, put 
that in. Okay. And then the last one is a pinch of garlic powder. Very strong seasoning, so I just need a pinch. A pinch is what you can pinch with two fingers and drop it. So I'm gonna pinch my garlic powder, just a pinch, and put that in. Okay. Now, I am going to mix all the ingredients with the rubber scraper. So it's a nice thing to do is kind of look inside, <coughs> excuse me, and make sure you have everything. So I can see that I have all my ingredients and I'm going to blend them together. Now when I blend them, the flavors are gonna to come together and these herbs are gonna start rehydrating, means they're gonna become soft and their flavor is gonna come out since they've been dehydrated. So blend this together. Now if you can make this dip ahead of time, like two hours ahead of time before you're gonna eat it, it actually tastes better because it becomes more flavorful as the herbs and spices come together. All right, so that's nice and blended. So now I'm on step six. Serve the dip with carrots and celery sticks in an attractive manner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a regular little cereal bowl, and now I'm gonna use my rubber scraper, and I'm gonna scrape the dip into that cereal bowl. Now I have a little bit of dip left on my rubber scraper, so I'm gonna use a spoon here and just get that all in there. Then I'm gonna put a spoon in the dip. Then I'm gonna put this with my carrots and celery sticks. Okay, so you can see that that looks really delicious. Now, to eat it, the polite way to eat any dip is to not double dip. Double dipping is where you dip a chip or a celery stick or carrot stick once, you take a bite, and then you dip it again. It's not polite, it's actually pretty gross. So what you're gonna do when you eat this is you're gonna um, have a plate. You're gonna put some a scoop of dip on your plate and some celery and carrot sticks or whatever vegetables you like. This is excellent with green peppers, um, like bell peppers that you cut up. Um, it's really good with cherry tomatoes, any kind of vegetables, cucumbers that you like, you can try that. So what I would do is put a little bit of dip on your plate and then put some of the, the veggies on your plate. And then if you're dipping off your own plate, it is okay to double dip. But when you're sharing the bowl, you don't wanna double dip. So I'm gonna give it a try. I'm gonna take a celery stick. I am going to get the dip, some of the dip on there and see how it tastes. It's so good and it's healthy. Bonus. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you try this at home. Bye.